Alerting is vital to quickly notify you of any problems in your application. Cloud monitoring lets you set up custom alerting, but it's important to set up alerting correctly. Let's go over how you can set up alerting, and then look at some common mistakes and learn how to avoid them. Alerts provide timely awareness of operational problems in your cloud applications, so you can resolve the problems quickly. For example, you may have a system that's having higher latency than expected, or your production environment might run into a resource constraint. Here, we can see an actual notification email from an alert based on CPU usage. This email shows key information such as what triggered the alert, which project it's in, and when it happened. When you create an alerting policy, you'll need to describe the conditions under which you want to be alerted and how you want to be notified. This includes identifying the metrics and values that the alert will trigger on. Metrics can come from your Google Cloud services such as Compute Engine or GKE. You can also alert on metrics that come from your uptime checks or SLOs. Notifications for an alert can be sent to multiple channels like email, SMS, or PubSub. Adding multiple notification channels makes sure everyone can be notified, no matter which tools they're using. Now, let's look at how to avoid some common mistakes teams make when setting up alerts. The key to useful alerts is timeliness. Some metrics may lag behind actual usage due to ingestion delays. This means they may not be as useful for production alerts. For example, we can see a few metrics here that are sampled every 60 seconds, but could take up to 6 hours to actually report. If you want to alert on these types of metrics, you'd better make sure that you can tolerate the potential wait time. Another common mistake is using the wrong kinds of metrics and alerts. There are three types of metrics and five types of data that can be used, and it's important to know when to use each. Types of metrics you can use are gauge metrics, where the value represents a specific instance in time. A common example is measuring CPU utilization at any point in time. Delta metrics, where the value measures the change since it was last recorded. One example would be measuring the change in requests for an API. And cumulative metrics, where the value increases over time. A great example of this is compute usage time. It's important to read the full details on each metric and choose the right ones to match what you need. Not every type of metric can use every type of value. In addition, cumulative metrics can't be used for alerting without first being aggregated into non-cumulative metrics. It's also important to understand the two stages of data aggregation, alignment and reduction. Alignment aggregates your data within a single time series by bucketing unaligned data into alignment periods, or windows. You can then choose different functions to calculate a single value aligned to a minute boundary, such as sum, average, or max. Reduction then further aggregates that data by grouping the data across labels. For example, you may align your latency metric value to hourly buckets using the maximum value, and then reduce by regional labels. That would give you the maximum latency per region for each hour. Just like the types of metrics, you'll want to make sure that you're aggregating data in the way that makes the most sense for what you're trying to measure. In addition to that, here are two best practices to make sure you follow. First, the alignment period should always be greater than or equal to your metrics delay time window. Otherwise, your window might not have any data in it due to the delay. Second, make sure you're using multiple conditions correctly. Choosing any means only one condition needs to be met for your alert, while choosing all means every condition has to be met. Check out the documentation to see more examples and additional details about alerting and metrics.